Our WinForm scheduler control has a Gantt view for managing and displaying appointments and dependency data. In this video, we'll show you how to build a SQL database populated with tasks, bind our tables to a Gantt view in the scheduler control, and explore the data representation options of the Gantt view. I'll start with an empty WinForms application. First, drop the split container control on the form and dock it to the parent container. Add the scheduler control to the right pane and dock it to the parent container. Click Create Sample Database for Gantt View to see the SQL script and copy it to the clipboard. Next, drag and drop the Resources Tree control to the left pane and dock it to the parent container. Now we need to add a database. Open the Server Explorer and click Connect to Database. Change the data source to the Microsoft SQL Server database file, name it Gantt Test, and click OK. In the Server Explorer, right-click the new database and select New Query. Paste the script here and click Execute. If you go to our website's documentation on hierarchical resource specifics, you'll find a new SQL script. This table will serve as the target for our scheduler's data source component. Copy the script, starting with the set identity insert. Replace the content with the copied script and execute it. From the scheduler smart tag, click the Appointments Data Source dropdown and select Add Project Data Source. Keep Database, choose the dataset model, and click Next. Select the Gantt Test Data Connection and click Yes to copy the local data file to the project and modify the connection. Now save the connection as Gantt Test Connection String and click Next. We'll be working with the fields in all three table objects. The Appointments data source should refer to the Appointment Binding Source table. Here, select the Gantt View Mappings checkbox to map fields containing the appointment identifier and percent complete value. Then click Generate and Finish to exit the window. Select the Resource table from the Resource Data Source drop-down menu. Click Generate in the Mapping Wizard and click Next to add the ID sort data from the Custom Properties Mapping dialog. Then, bind the appointment dependencies to the Task Dependencies table. Generate the mappings and click Finish. Click the Resources Tree Smart Tag and run the Column Designer. Now, add the ID sort, ID, and description fields to the control. Set the column sort sort order property to ascending and visible property to false. Select the ID and change its visible property to false as well. Now select the Gantt test dataset file in the Solution Explorer and open it in the Designer view. Set the read only property of the unique ID field to false. Now, switch to Code View. We need to add code that writes modified appointments back to the database. Go back to our website's documentation and look at how to enable and display the Gantt View. We want event handlers for appointment data after user modifications. Copy and paste the code from the C Sharp tab. Go back to the designer, select the scheduler storage component, and set its appointments change appointments deleted, and appointments inserted events to the newly added event handlers. Now let's get back to the code view to add event handlers to update the relation data for our appointments. Once again, you'll find this code on our website's documentation.
Select the scheduler storage component again and set its three appointments dependencies events to the newly added event handlers. Add code to update the appointment ID from the data source during the row updated event. Paste the code from the documentation page into the form's load event handler. Add a using statement for the system.data.sql client namespace to include the SQL row update event definition. We'll add a handler to update the table adapter data identifiers after every row update. Once again, I'll grab the code from our documentation. Now we'll have to add some code that sets the active view type property to Gantt, group type property to resource, show recourse headers to true, and sell auto height options dot enabled to true. In the Solution Explorer, select the database file and take a look at its copy to output directory property. Set it to do not copy or copy if newer to save appointments created in the application. Okay, let's run the application and take a look. Let's adjust the splitter to get a better sense of the resource hierarchy. The resources here may be collapsed to hide any unwanted detail tasks categories. We'll add some unbound data. By default, a completion percentage is displayed adjacent to a default caption title. End users can assign label data to each task so that they can group resources or add order of magnitude information to the Gantt view. Dependency arrows are constructed from the arrow tail. Right click and select Create Dependency. Then choose which task you want to connect with the dependency. By default, the natural finish to start dependency is created, but you can set any combination of finish and start relations. The usual scheduler features for end users, such as repositioning, banded time ruler, and scroll navigation are supported. You can open the appointment editor for a task and edit its percentage completion. The task is updated with shading to show the percentage complete. Collapsing resources populated with tasks hides the tasks on an inherited resource. As a result, you'll find it easy to compare any given subset resources without any visual clutter. Like any DevExpress control, the scheduler's Gantt view can easily be customized. Now let's get back to the code and set the show resource headers property to false to get rid of the header display. If we run the application again, we'll see that the resource headers are hidden. And that's it for this video. To learn more about our WinForms controls, make sure to visit our website's documentation. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.